Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Good afternoon. Kiana Bass on behalf of the California State Association of Counties in partnership with the League of Cities doing this presentation on the local roads. Uh, this afternoon. As you've just heard, uh, CSAC, the League, and our regional transportation partners have done exhaustive research to define the needs on the local system. Um, but we also think this research can be very informative uh, with respect to the outcomes we can achieve for the local street and road system with respect to different funding scenarios and proposed funding solutions. For instance, uh, this uh, report has informed us we know that waiting just five years to invest additional revenues into the local system adds an $11 billion price tag to the shortfall and $21 billion over the next decade. So looking at that statistic in a vacuum alone for just the local system, we believe that information coming from the report really um, demands an, an swift action in the next um, in this current legislative session to avoid higher costs to taxpayers in the future. Um, so as uh, Jennifer and my other colleagues on this panel have uh, defined, uh, we have a well-defined problem. So the main question before you all and us um, as transportation stakeholders today is how do we make a significant investment uh, that will actually tackle the comprehensive uh, system shortfalls on both the state highways and local streets and roads? And what are the attributes of the potential funding solutions that you all are considering? And I would add that I um, completely agree with Mr. Heminger's point about what are the goals that we are trying to achieve in aligning those funding solutions with those goals. Um, also pleased to uh, hear the presentation from Executive Director Kempton with respect to his ideas on the priorities and policies that should be a part of any solution, immediate, sustainable, predictable, user fee based, substantial, and dedicated. I think CSAC and the League would agree with all of those um, principles with respect to solutions. And we also know that from focus group and polling efforts from the California Alliance for Jobs and Transportation California over the past few months that voters support levying small increases, uh, revenue increases from a multiple uh, different sources. We think that this approach promotes fairness because everyone uses the transportation system differently. And it would also avoid sticker shock that could come from raising all of the revenue from a single source. For instance, we looked at how much we would need to raise the gas tax just to address the backfall, the $79.3 billion shortfall, forgive me, a short, that's a shortfall number on the local street and road system, and it would be $0.54 cents gas tax alone, and that's not even addressing the needs on the state highway system. So, of course, I think voters could uh, react pretty adversely to seeing something like that overnight. Um, local governments are in lockstep with the, the polling uh, data and how this informs solutions. Uh, so we have come on board and potent, uh, in support of a array of potential solutions, including increasing the uh, diesel tax to compensate for the damage that heavy vehicles do to both state and local roads, uh, imposing vehicle registration or license fees, as long as those are dedicated to new roadway and highway maintenance, imposing a fee to ensure that zero emission vehicles are paying uh, their fair share to the damage they do for the roads, I think this is an increasingly important consideration as the share of the fleet, uh, those, the percentage of those vehicles as an overall share of the fleet grows. And most importantly, we support increasing the gasoline excise tax, which hasn't been adjusted, as you have heard, in over 20 years. Um, you've heard about the reasons fuel economy and inflation are eroding that um, source. And while we recognize we need to modernize our revenue options, um, the gas tax is still the swiftest and easiest way today to quickly generate a significant amount of revenue for investment into the local streets uh, and road system and state highways while we develop longer term solutions. Um, the way we use any new revenue is just as important as how we collect it. And CSAC and the League are in strong support of a fix-it-first approach with a focus on um, maintenance and preservation of the existing system. Uh, I think the polling uh, that I referenced earlier also supports um, voters uh, have a strong support for investing in the maintenance of the existing system before investing in um, new capital or other types of programs. Uh, we also think that the local or that any new revenue raise should be shared equally between the state and local systems, as I think we've tried to demonstrate uh, both from speakers from this, uh, that represent state highways and regional and local roads that the systems are completely intertwined. We share revenue from both state, local, and federal sources. 
uh, and um, our mutual constituents drive on both systems. I don't think when they're driving to work and school that they recognize whether they're on a local road, a state road, et cetera. Um, we shouldn't uh, reinvent the wheel with respect to allocating uh, maintenance money as well. Locals have historically received gas tax through direct subventions. Uh, this um, has worked effectively because there is a lot of transparency and accountability at the local uh, level. Cities and counties adopt project lists within annual budgets and also provide extensive reports to the state controller every year on all revenues received and expenditures made across a variety of types of programs that cities and counties invest in. Uh, nor should we forget the pavement management systems that cities and counties are required to use in order to develop the most cost-effective investment plans uh, that address the local individualized communities' most dire needs. Um, accordingly, local uh, governments would support additional accountability and transparency measures such as the ones that we agreed to in Proposition 1B from 2006, whereby we provided the Department of Finance, and you can insert that for another state department or agency, project lists at the beginning of the year as well as end of the year project reporting so that uh, you as our elected officials, uh, states, and constituents, that was all put on a website and so it was made very public. And, uh, locals were kept um, held accountable to the promises that they made to the voters at the beginning of the year. Uh, finally, to keep the confidence of the voters, we must ensure that all new revenues are dedicated to transportation. Uh, voters have supported this approach time and time again. Uh, we've seen uh, Proposition 42, Proposition 1A a number of years later. And so those are some of our thoughts with respect to the principles that should be included in any uh, funding solution. Um, I'll wrap up by saying we recognize that the challenge of tackling both the state and local system funding shortfalls is very significant and difficult. Uh, the good news is that cities and counties stand ready to invest hundreds of billions of dollars into the local system uh, right away. We can put that to use on maintenance of existing systems, safety projects, uh, and other important investments. Um, Jennifer had outlined uh, for you what would happen if we don't receive any new revenue. I'll remind you, PCI drops from an at-risk uh, category of a 66 to a failed condition of 55 in the next decade. Um, and recognizing generating $8 billion annually just for cities and counties would be a very difficult choice in order to get it to best management practices. So we think that with an investment of $3 billion a year over the next 10 years, uh, we can make significant strides. Uh, with $3 billion a year, cities and counties could bring roads into a good condition, or a PCI of 73, um, and we avoid an additional $21 billion of backlog. The further the system falls into disrepair, the more expensive it becomes to fix, and this challenge becomes all the more daunting. Uh, so with that, I thank you for the opportunity to provide you with this information, and uh, CSAC and the League look forward to partnering with you all as we tackle these important issues. Before we go any further, do any of the committee members have any questions for Jennifer or Keanu? You guys do a really good job. <laughs>